Today, I think it's time to install these gauges in my car. I've got two of them assembled into the, the pod there, and I have some wiring and stuff laid out. I'm gonna use this firewall boot here. And that's my boost controller. Basically, all the connectors are humongous. They're kind of like this. This is like an inch, a little bit less than an inch and a quarter. Same with this one. Um, it seems more viable to fish this end through from the outside, so this coming in, but Regardless, I gotta drill a quarter an inch hole for this anyways. So I gotta find a spot in my car to drill such a thing. I had this in the beginning just as a temporary gauge to see what my boost is. I was lazy and I just fished it. I poked a hole in this little rubber grommet here and just fished it through there. And that's where it's lived for about a year and so. But now I want a more permanent solution. So I'm looking in here in the, the computer section to see if there's like a nice spot I can kind of go through. The OEM grommet is humongous, but it's not big enough for me to stretch any further. Now wait, let me get some light. Let's go to this other side. So I can get my light in here. Whoa. Why isn't this the same? That'll work. All right, much better, there's light. I was originally gonna bore this hole out a little bit bigger so I can just feed stuff through there. I got myself one of these humongous uh, step drills and this was supposed to go da -da 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 and go through. But I peeked behind there and there's like two brake lines and like a, a connector, a coupler or whatever you call those. I don't think you can see it, but it's dark so I'm not gonna show you. Um, there's brake lines and like a connector stuff uh, somewhere right about here and it's not viable to feed that boot through there at least not I shouldn't feed it through there so I started thinking it's like oh I can put it through here the OEM grommet is huge I was thinking maybe I can get a bigger grommet like a, a one meant for more wires um, but that's too much effort then I'd have to like re-pull some of this stuff I don't know I guess it just disconnects and it's just three plugs but I could just drill my one and a quarter inch hole right here. That way everything just kind of feeds through here and it feeds through this hole in the door and it goes right out. I think that's what I'm just gonna settle for. I'm gonna do that. I'm using a one and a quarter inch hole saw here just to like line up where this is gonna be to see if this is even gonna work. After looking at some more, I don't think I wanna put it in that corner even though it'll just fit just right. I'm gonna do it right here actually, right next to this. There's still room behind this plug to put all this stuff through and it's just wires that I have pushing through it and the wire will bend around the corner here kind of go up and go behind this and just go right out. Pull the seatbelt out of the way, push the harness down so I have clear access to that hole where it's kind of smidged up and then I center punched it Now I'm going to use this. This thing is huge. It's a step drill. It goes down to one and three eighths as the last step so I got to stop on the second last one there. All right, you got this little deburring tool. I'm gonna deburr the hole so it's not sharp. Just gotta scrape it around on both sides. I painted and prepped it so it won't rust where the metal's now bare. The problem with my boot here is the smallest plugs are bigger than the hole. So I think at minimum, I need to be at this one, maybe even this one. Um, I'm gonna try this one first because I want the smallest hole possible, but definitely it's not gonna work here. This is not big enough. Oh yeah, that'll work. This is probably my biggest plug. This end is outside. I'm gonna end up pushing this through the car from the rear, just uh, to, so this goes in that hole. I'm just gonna fish these through now. This one goes through. Oh wait, no, I wanna do that big one first. That's one. Do this. Perfect. The wires are run. I can fish this through the car now. There we go. The hole is now plugged and all the wires are through. Should label my uh, meter plugs because they're exactly the same. I know this one's boost and I know this one's oil. This one already labeled water. 
I can run my wires out this way up the pillar to, to wherever they need to go. Here it is. I ran all the wires through up my dash. It goes this way. It follows the main harness, goes into there. It goes behind the speaker, goes up the dash on the inner side, and then it goes behind the dash mount right there, and then it goes up and it shows up by my A pillar. Next step is to tidy this up, maybe put some little wire loom in, and then put in my gauges. I got the gauge screwed in and aligned properly. So it just looks like it sits on the pillar like this. There's a, I bought the three set from Auto Giano, so there's an upper center and a lower. So this one's top. My oil temp is gonna be on top. I'm gonna use adhesive to stick it on, because that seems like the right way to do it. Plug them all in, and I stuck them all on, and it should be all set. Now I just have to hook up the sensors on the other end. This came out pretty nice. You can take a look. You got oil right here, water temp right here, boost right here. Um, they're fairly sturdy. Not exactly sure what I'm doing, but temporarily <laughs> this will work. Now to figure out my wiring situation. I have three gauges, so I have three of each of these wires, three reds and three blacks and three whites. White is probably accessory, so, well not accessory, um, lights. So it knows when my headlights or something are on and it'll backlight the gauges. And then I have red and black to power it. So let's pull these through and wire them all together. Make sure I have three of each. I have three whites, three blacks and three reds, cool. These will be separated. So I'll take this excess of this outwards because my sensors are going to go further away and I'm not sure how much slack I have to adjust this because this being a mid-engine car, the wiring is really typically meant for like a front engine car and your gauges are in the front so you go right through the firewall and you have plenty of space but now I have to go like four or five feet backwards if not more. So I might have to splice extra wiring in to extend it. Let's see, let's see how that goes. That's good. This goes out there. I have to reassemble the little harness bracket and vacuum out all that crumbly stuff I drilled out. Hey Google, turn off the vacuum. Hey Google, turn off the vacuum. So I'm looking at some of these wires. Some are definitely too short. Uh, this one is water. Yeah, this one's the water temp. And I'm not any, I'm not even anywhere close to just direct line that way. So I'm gonna have to snip these or, or see if I can remove the head and just extend these. Same with the oil temp. The oil temp is the highest gauge and therefore it used the most of my wire. And there you can see it doesn't reach. The other things like the boost controller and boost gauge, uh, they have little map sensors or little controller doofickies. And these just need to be mounted somewhere. I have plenty of wire for those. And this might be okay. So this boost controller thing will be fine. This thing will be okay. It should work out. I have plenty of room to mount stuff here. I just got to decide how to do it. I'm not sure why I wouldn't mount stuff here. It looks like a pretty good spot to do it since I have so much room. All right, so I got my gauge pods installed. They're over here. I ran my wiring down. Got to tidy this up now that I hooked everything up. I had to tap the blue wire. I decided to tap my turbo timers harness just because it was easier to get to. I tapped the blue wire for accessory. That way these will power up when the car is on. And then I had to tap the red wire with the yellow stripe on my combination switch. And that way at night, when I turn the lights on, you can see the gauges. So let's see what these look like. I'm excited to power these up for the first time. Let's do it. Okay. Let's see what they look like with the lights on. Ooh, these are bright. Uh-oh. <laughs> That's the cluster with the lights on. And these are the gauges off on uh-oh 
this might not be good. All right, so this is what it would be like with the dome light on. Uh, I'm kind of concerned now. I'm gonna turn the dome light off. Now it's pitch black. I'm gonna turn on my headlights. Oh. All right, I guess it's not super bright. It actually looks a lot worse on camera than in person. It might take some getting used to to have these bright white things right here. This is not what I hoped for. Yeah. This is what they look like. Several days later. Luckily I found out that Autometer makes a dimmable switch unit thing that controls I think up to 10 gauges. I only have three, so this solves my problem here. You can turn this, it'll get brighter or dimmer or even off. So a little bit, medium, bright, super bright. Yeah, looks pretty good. I gotta find a place to put this. Uh, probably we'll tuck it here when the panel is back because it's, this way it's just kind of hidden, like right here maybe. Or I might just shove it under the dash. Probably unlikely I'll adjust it once I get it to however I like. It looks pretty good. It's not too bright compared to the gauge cluster. It's just a white backlight and I guess it's a little bit brighter just by nature. Whatever, good enough. Still need to wire this up. So I should probably do this before I close everything up. I got this threaded oil plug for my temp sensor to go into my oil pan. This is the solution I have right now to go with until I figure this out. So for now, just to get me going, this is what I'm using. I might as well change my oil anyways, and let's get this started. This time, let's try not to make a mess. This should work. I'm going to put some thread sealant on this and thread this sucker in. I got a nice even coat here. I'm gonna thread it in right there. Oh, that's nice. This can fit over this. Cool. Oh, wrong side. This is pretty tight now. It is brass. You don't wanna go too crazy because you could strip it. It would just kind of go whoop. I guess both sides are brass. It might be all right. I don't know. As you can see, my wire is not long enough. This is as long as the supplied wire goes. Stops about here, and I need to go about another foot and a half to get to here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this and just extend it. Uh, extending these allegedly makes them a little bit less accurate, but I mean, this, is like a, this isn't like a huge amount, so it shouldn't add too much resistance and mess up my readings too much. It should be within a few degrees, and that's close enough. All right, here it is. It's all hooked up, or almost all hooked up. This is the stepper motor for the boost controller. This is my uh, new map sensor for my boost gauge and everything is kind of hooked up and goes wherever it needs to go. This is my oil temp sensor. It goes all the way in here, goes into my drain plug because I don't have anywhere to thread it right now. So bottom of the sump, that's a good spot to test for oil temperature anyway. So this is fine. The water temp isn't hooked up because I don't have anywhere to put it yet. I haven't decided. I kind of want to put it up this way near my thermostat, but then I got to like, um, split one of my hoses and put one of those T's in. So I'll do that later, and this will just hang out here taped up. This is it down here, not bad. I also like refinished this stuff while I was down here. So got the same undercoating like the floor, and now it comes up here, and then eventually I'll get to the other bits of the car when I'm down here. I wanna see my oil gauge work. I'm gonna warm up the car a little bit, run the fresh oil through, and maybe I'll check the little boost gauge too, and I'll play with my, uh, Little controller a little bit, but let's see. It's working great. My oil temp is working. It says it's 60 Celsius, whatever that is in American. Um, the boost gauge is functional. I don't want to rev it too much. It's late now. Looks good. All right. My wiring is all cleaned up. Everything's tucked away nicely. I routed the boost controller wire all the way through here. It goes up and it goes under the dash. Now it sits up here. I just have to stick this down so it's not gonna pull it around. Wire's tucked in behind the steering column. I even moved my turbo timer. I had it stuck over here. I wanted some of the space back so I decided to tuck it over here because I don't really touch it much. I'm gonna set it to something and I'll just leave it. This way it's still somewhat accessible if I needed to change something. Um, the wiring is all hooked up and put away. 
as you can see, I can use these terminal block things. It just kind of splits and everything taps in and clips in real easy. This way, now I can put all my panels back and it should cover all that up. Okay, thanks for watching. These are my Auto Giano uh, triple eight pillar pods. They were angled a little bit differently because I ordered three and had them do it, where this way they're not all shaped the same. This is what I can see from my seat. The only thing I want to change is I might want to move my boost to with the water. I don't know. I might flip the orientation around with this. This is my boost controller right here. All this stuff is easily accessible. So I can just press it right there and it's not in the way of my gauges. So this is in a good spot. Uh, I'm pretty happy with everything. It was a lot of work to wire everything and kind of run it properly, but once you're done, it's really not that hard. It's a pretty easy job to do. I hope this inspires you to do something with your gauges or whatever you wanted to do in here. I've been trying to build my way up to 100 horsepower at the wheels. I think that might be reasonable and I will be happy once I get there, but who knows, once I get there, it might be different. But I don't know what kind of power I'm putting down right now. I gotta get this uh, dynode as is with my mod with uh, just adding a boost controller and the N1 computer. Um, and then I gotta do the K-Sport one too because what, I got that like a year ago and I still haven't really done anything with it. But we're almost there, we're almost there. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you're not subscribed already so you can continue to see uh, my build progress here of putting my car back together. Oh, and don't forget, buy some AutoZam goodies like uh, performance parts or just random knickknacks. Just visit my website, anythingwheel.com, and visit the shop page, and you can browse around and look at the random things I have. There's a lot of things in progress. Once they are developed and tested or whatnot, I can release them for sale too. But currently, it's the wave track differentials. So if you have uh, anything that uses the same drivetrain as an AutoZam AZ1 or Suzuki Kara, I believe it's a Suzuki Wagon R. Uh, Suzuki Alto Works and a uh, servo, a Suzuki servo. I don't know what those things are, but um, if you have one of those, you want a wave track differential, I'm your guy. I got some.